Hello class, welcome to week seven. We're almost there. You guys are doing such a great job. I just wanna say this class, uh, I've been really impressed with your work ethic, with the way you've been participating in discussion boards, all that good stuff. Uh, there's been some great uh, discussions, some really strong papers. I've actually uh, really worked hard this morning and already gotten your week six work back and graded to you. A couple of you still haven't submitted your film review, so make sure you get those in so you don't have um, drastic late penalties there. Uh, but good job. Almost everyone picked the Little Prince, which I'm not terribly surprised about uh, because it is such a good film. Uh, I, so I hope you enjoyed it and some very strong discussions. Uh, I was very proud of you guys on the way you handled the topic of nostalgia because it's actually a little bit trickier than what meets the eye and you guys really dug into that. So uh, pat yourselves on the back there. And those earth sculptures, uh, I was really impressed with as well. Some really strong write-ups especially. So I hope you enjoyed doing that. I noticed a lot of you saying that, uh, you know, it changed your opinion a little bit about artists like Goldsworthy that you went into it feeling really intimidated or, or almost just not understanding these kind of artists and that, you know, uh, you, you see how what he does is pretty, pretty amazing. So uh, kudos to you there. So that's all in and graded for you. Please let me know if you have any questions about uh, anything you see in the grade book. Week six was a pretty heavy week. Week seven is a bit lighter, and the reason is because I want you to start working on your capstone project, which uh, is due on the Friday of week eight. So remember that, that you don't have next week uh, that full seven days to uh, get that in. That way I have time to get it graded and back to you uh, in time uh, for me to submit final grades on that following Monday. Okay, so what we got going this week is you're going to do your reading, especially if you can at least just get this done. I mean, this would be the bare minimum of what I'd like you to get done for your capstone project this week. Uh, we're finally reading that Francis Schaeffer text, Art in the Bible. So you're reading the essay, Some Reflections on Art. There's two essays in the book. You're just reading one of them, Some Reflections on Art. We're doing a discussion board, and then you're uh, working on your capstone project. So you only have one thing due this week. No quiz. Uh, no, no more create projects. We're done with those. So yay, take a breath and really kind of dive in to this project because the reason I make this week light is because I want to make sure you have ample time to get this project done uh, effectively and to the best of your ability. Okay, so we're discussing culture making in Christianity, and I do this discussion board this week um, because I want you to really dig into Francis Schaeffer and engage with, you know, the role of Christian artists and Christian artwork and all that fun stuff. So you're going to view uh, two film clips about artists in the Koto Fujimura's exhibitions, and you can just follow the links below and explore his website. So these are actually both on his website, but I've given you links directly to them. Uh, so this is his website, and this is one of the ones I want you to watch. They're both relatively short, under 10 minutes. He's a really interesting guy, a uh, very dynamic artist and presenter and speaker. He started a whole organization called I Am, and you can click on it here at the bottom, and it's, uh, it's basically uh, International Artist Movement is what I Am stands for, but it's inspiring work that cares for culture. And so he's really wrestled with this idea of, you know, faith and humanity and art, as you can see he's said here. Uh, so he's a really interesting guy to engage with. Go ahead and browse through his works. It's going to take you watching some of his clips and doing a little bit of reading, possibly, to understand where he's coming from and the perspective uh, that he has, because he's a uh, an abstract artist. And so... This is why I like you guys to engage with him because there's a bit of controversy there that this isn't an artist who is a Christian artist who's, you know, painting very transparently themed paintings, a, a painting of Jesus, a painting of a biblical story. Uh, they're very abstract. And so we're going to really use him as an example uh, when we're looking at Francis Schaeffer. So after completing this week's reading, and viewing these clips, I want you to answer the following questions in a discussion board. So number one, consider the quote, as a Christian, we know why a work of art has value. Why? First, because a work of art is a work of creativity, and creativity has value because God is the creator. So we're in, in effect, uh, when we're creating something, uh, we're celebrating uh, God's nature. 
So how could we apply this quote to the work of Makoto Fujimura? And this is going to get you really to start thinking uh, in the kind of mind frame I want you to be in for writing your capstone project. So does an artist like Fujimura change your perspective on Christian art? Why or why not? And number three, what is the job of a Christian artist? So give evidence from Schaefer. Uh, maybe you don't agree with Schaefer. That's fine. Uh, I want you to really present your own opinion here because this is kind of the antithesis of your capstone project. It's going to help you get in that mind frame. But here is all very opinion based and you can, you know, tell it like it is. Uh, in your in your paper, I really want it to be focused on analysis and research. So then comments, at least one of your peers post. You guys know how these discussion works, uh, discussion boards work at this point. So you might ask them, do they like Fujimura's art? Why or why not? Uh, if you see something interesting that they've put under one, two, or three, then you can comment there as well. So again, two to four sentences in length for each of these questions. Uh, so, you know, if you're writing two sentences, they better be two really compelling, thoughtful sentences. Uh, you know, if you're wanting to get that extra full, not extra credit, but that full credit on these. Uh, and, of course, you'll be graded on your participation, so be sure to ask questions and answer when asked. So that's all that is due this week. So uh, by Sunday night at midnight, you need to have that discussion board done. And I want to jump into the week eight learning activities and just briefly go over the capstone project and let you know of some changes that have happened uh, in Blackboard and with our ops program is they've changed the way that we submit your uh, these projects. And so they're calling it a critical assignment. So your capstone project and your critical assignment are the same thing, in fact. They used to call it capstone project, and that's how I have it all in here. Uh, they have actually added in these other items for directions for submitting your critical assignment and submitting your critical assignment. And uh, I'll go over this a little more next week, but I just want you to make sure you're aware of it and look over it so you know what's coming there. So let's go to your capstone uh, project. Make sure you go in here this, this week during week seven and download the instructions here. So... Uh, you know, even though Schaefer passed away 30 years ago, his text, Art in the Bible, remains a very powerful and relative piece of discussing contemporary art in the Christian world. So you're, again, reading that some perspectives on art. This is a 10 to 12 page paper. That's 10 to 12 pages of text, uh, not including images, bibliography, all that stuff. And what you're going to be doing is completing three individual case studies. So plan this out this week. You know, do, do an outline like we did for the... Uh, uh, theory application papers. Think about, you know, okay, I want each perspective to be three to four pages, uh, and, you know, this is how I'm going to break it up so that we can make sure that you're, you know, giving enough time to each one of these. You're not loading one with a lot of information, and then, you know, one is a little bit weaker. We want to make sure they're equal. And what you're going to be doing is these are uh, Schaefer's 11 perspectives on understanding work from a Christian perspective. You're going to pick three of them, and each one of those three will be an individual case study. If you're wondering what on earth is a case study, I've given you a Wikipedia page here uh, where you can read about what a case study is. It's basically where we're, we're using uh, some kind of data or media uh, as an example uh, for, for a specific argument. So in this case, you're going to be using a work of art to argue one of Schaefer's perspectives in each of these three case studies. So I'll let you look through all of these. And uh, if you have questions as you're doing this reading on, on one of the perspectives, I'm really, you know, struggling with perspective nine, uh, you know, send me an email and let me know and we can talk through it in more detail. Again, and I keep saying this, you know, I'm your biggest advocate and your biggest tool. So uh, make sure that you use that. And I, I don't know, I can't help if I don't know there's an issue or if you need help. So reach out to me. Uh, so once you've selected the three perspectives you would like to write about, begin to research artists and work of art that illustrate each perspective. Your chosen artist must be from 20th or 21st centuries because we're contemporary uh, visual arts after all. And contemporary would really be something from the 21st century, but I like to open up that door and let you do something from the 1900s. In case there's some modern artists that you really like, and it just broadens the horizons for what you can write about. These don't need to be quote-unquote Christian artists. 
Uh, so consider browsing the following websites for inspiration, and I've given you some links of where you might find some, some good stuff here. Uh, make sure that you're picking artists who you can find a lot of information and research on because you are going to be doing just a little bit of Panofsky in there and we want to make sure that these aren't people who are uh, extremely obscure and you're not going to be able to find information. Uh, so, you know, it's okay to be a little safe in who you pick because we want to uh, make sure that you're successful in your research. So each case study must include the following, an introduction to the perspective, an introduction to the image. You're going to do Panofsky's intrinsic level to give your reader context to the image. So why was this image created? What does it mean for the artist who created it? This is going to, you know, need some outside research to validate your claims. Uh, make sure that you include the image being discussed. So I want these images with captions of the full image citation. You know how that works by now. Artist name, title of work, your created medium, full web source. Uh, you can put these at the end in an image supplement, or you can put them in each uh, each perspective, each case study. Uh, I prefer them almost that way because then they're right there with that information. It's a little more dynamic that way. And what you're going to be doing is an assessment of how this image is a good example of the perspective being discussed. This is the culminating point of your case study. Everything else is setting this part up. So this is that aha moment. Don't overlook it. Include supporting evidence from the text and any appropriate research you might have done to support your position. And then you're going to include a personal reflection on why you find this artwork powerful or thought-provoking. So here, and here only, it is appropriate for you to use first-person narrative voice in this personal reflection. I recommend that when you're doing this assignment that you give subtitles to each section within your case study. Uh, that way we kind of know as a reader where we are. It helps us in our mind when we're reading something to break up ideas and to move on with you when things are uh, really categorized well and presented well. So each case study, I want a minimum of three outside sources. One of these can be Schaefer uh, per case study. So you want to explore art journals, uh, museum websites, or news sources for your other sources. And you know, if you're having trouble finding some of these or finding uh, appropriate research, again, I'm here to help. Let me know and we can kind of um, find some things together. So formatting guide, uh, I'll go over this a little more next week so you can read through that on your own. Make sure you proofread, this is really important. So that is, uh, in a nutshell, what your capstone project or critical assignment, as they're also calling it, is going to be. Uh, so we'll talk more about what's going on in week eight next week. And if you have any questions about anything thus far, don't hesitate to ask. And as always, have a fantastic week.